Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So this is another method. So here they use the energy based criteria. So mainly they calculate the Van der Waals energy and the electrostatic energy, right. Then using these interactions, right, you can identify the binding sites. How do you identify the binding sites? For example, if you have these uh, PDB coordinates, right, in all the cases we use the structures. Right? In this case, you can take these binding sites as a kind of experimental data. Right, because we are not doing any experiments directly to identify these binding sites or binding affinity, but we use the known 3D structures, right, and use this criteria to identify the binding sites. Fine. So, how to identify the binding sites using energy based criteria? So, here this is the chain A and chain B. For example, if you take the arginine 88, right, so there are different atoms in arginine. So, for each atom you calculate the energy with all atoms in the partner chain, right for all atoms in the partner chain. So, then you do with the second atom in the third atom, so they calculate the energy, then sum up all the energies in all the atoms in the arginine, then you sum up the values that will give you the energy of this arginine 88, right. If you want to take the arginine 88, take all the atoms with each atom in chain A, we calculate the energy with all atoms in chain B, right, do it for all the atoms for example, N, C, A, C, O and so on. Then we sum up the values that will give you the energy of arginine 88 in chain A. Likewise, you can do for all the residues, right, for example, 100 residues, so we get 100 energy values. From these energy values, you can identify the binding sites based on the energy, right. So, how to uh, do that? This is an example. Uh, for example, the 1 Ai 4 A, tryptophan 74 has minus 13.2 kilo kel per mole, right. Like this phenylalanine 211, it has 14.78 kilo kel per mole, right. Fine. So, now from these energy values, you can see which residues are high preference to interact with the binding with the partner. So, we have the energy values, we divide in different bins. Right. For example, minus 2 to minus 1.9, minus 1.9, 9 to 1.8, right. So, each bin you can see the frequency of occurrence of the residues with their particular energy, right. For example, if you see minus 2 to minus 1.9, right, minus 1.9 to minus 1.8, so we can go with up to plus 1, right. So, here there are two different colors, one is in blue and one is in green. The blue one gives the data for each bin and the green one give the cumulative values, right, because we can go even less than uh, minus 2, here I show the value many values less than minus 2, right. So, this is where if it is less than minus 2, you can see that is around 7.7 uh, percent, because the bins are smaller, this is why I did not uh, plot that. So, finally, if you see minus 2, there are very less number, right, then up to minus 0 0.5, you can see the rise, right, and there is a peak right and then it is going down. So, if you take a cutoff of 1 kilo kel per mole for example, take this kilo, this cutoff right, then how many uh, residues, so the, what is the percentage of residues which are identified as binding sites, if you do this there is about 10.8 percent of residues right, which are identified as binding site residues right? this is reasonable, that is re relevant to the uh, report and literature. And the another case if you see there is a peak right, for example, take the energy of minus 0 0.3 to 0. Is 77 percent. Why this is a peak here? Yeah, because the energy values is very less, right? It is not significant. So, in this case, if the two atoms or the two residues which are far away in the structures, they are not making any contacts, right? They are not making interactions. That is the reason why uh, the values are around 0, right? That is about 77 percent of the residues they are not uh, in contact with each other, right? Fine. So, here we get the data based on the energy, right, when you compare the data with the distance, because energy and distance 
are almost similar to each other right because energy values are computed with two types of interactions what are the interactions we used coulomb's law as well as this van der waals right both are based on distance right so some are advantages some disadvantages right now if you see the energy you can see about 10.8 percent of residues which are identified as bonding sites and the distance we use different types of uh, distances you can say if you use the six angstrom with any atoms right you can say about 13.6 if it is c alpha it, it is 4 and c beta it is 7 right so our did 1 kilocal per mole it is uh, in between the c beta distance as well as with any atoms and if you see there are many mismatches about more than uh, 80 percent 90 percent you can see the matches and some which matches mainly because of the some of the repulsive interactions are also taken into account in this type of energy based criteria that is the reason right now i give you an example right how to get these interactions right so here this is these are the values right energy values with some residues right high energy values and if you look into all these structures right so for example, I show one example in 127 this origin in 1112 and this is a tryptophan uh, 144 right these two residues they try to interact so they are interacting with an energy of minus 6.2 kilo kilo per mole right this is the positive charge and this is the aromatic ring right so they are making a set of interactions which interaction they make cut and by interactions right this is the pi system this is the positive charge so they make cut and by interactions right then the question is there are some specific interactions are there any preference of amino acid residues to form this type of interactions right so in this case i show the propensity of different residues to be involved at the binding interface so in this case we just calculated the binding a propensity of this residue i right using the number of residues of type i in the binding site right with the normalized with the number of residues in the whole protein. So, what is n bind of i right for example, if you show this figure right I show this figure right how many residues of type i are the interface this is the interface residues for example, alanine how many alanine in the interface compared with the all alanines the particular protein right. So, if you do this right you can see some preferences for example, the arginine which has a value of 15.1 and the tryptophan 17.28 and the tyrosine 15.33 you can see phenyl alanine also very high right. So, you can see the preference of some specific residues right. From these residues, you can see that there are some sort of interactions, right? They are preferred to be at the interface due to the type of the residues, right? Now the question is: here we have only one residue propensity, right? How can we estimate? How can we identify the interacting partner to to identify the type of interactions? In this case, what do we need? We need the partner, right? Because the binding propensity will tell you the which residues are preferred to be interface like arginine or tryptophan and tyrosine to understand the type of interactions right we need the partner so for example tyrosine or, or, or arginine right in trying to interact with which type of the residues right in this case you take this residues in this uh, complex right for example this residue and this residue interact this is switch type of residue and this switch type of residue right for example this could be the phenylalanine right here you can see tyrosine then you can see both are in the ring system they can by pi pi interactions or here you can see the arginine here right and here you can see the tyrosine here then you can see which type of interactions they can make right. So, in this case we need the pairs right how to identify the pairs right. So, you can see the preference of i comma j right to using this equation n i j this is a number of types of i paired with j i from the protein 1 and j from the protein 2 in the partner and n i is the number of types residue i and j is the number of residues of type j right. When you look into the binding partners you can see some preferences for example, you see aspartic acid and arginine 
So, it can have the highest value of 8.64. Then you can see the uh, arginine and tyrosine 6.1, right. Likewise, a tryptophan tyrosine 6.5, tyrosine tryptophan 8.1. So, interestingly, if you see these numbers, you can find some sort of interactions are important. For example, if you take aspartic acid and arginine, which type of interactions are important? Electrostatic interaction, right? This minus this plus. Also, it does not depend on the type of the protein, whether you take one or two. Even if you take the other way around, that is also very high. Arginine and aspartic acid. If you see arginine and tyrosine, this is a ring, and here this is the positive charge. Right? And if you see the other way around, you can see tyrosine and arginine also having high preferred. In tryptophan tyrosine, this is also pi and this is also pi, you can see the pi pi interactions, right? aromatic aromatic interactions, right. Now, the question is okay, you identify the residues which are at the interface and you identify the pairs, right, from the partner uh, proteins, protein 1 and the protein 2, right. So, now the question is whether these interactions are specific or non specific. How can you estimate whether uh, this rest is from electrostatic interactions or not, right. right. Then you need to see whether the contribution energetic contributions are from the main chain or from the side chain, right. If the contributions are mainly from the main chain, then you can this is not specific. If they are from the side chain, then they are specific, right, fine. So, in this case, we can see the contribution from the main chain atoms and the side chain atoms, right. And we compare the values in the main chain and side chain, you can see side chain values are at least twice, right, than that of these main chain atoms, both in the case of the protein 1 or the protein 2, right. Here I define ligand as the uh, smaller portion of this complex and the receptor as the uh, bigger part of this complex, right. So, whatever this you consider, you can see the side chain contribution is higher than that of these uh, uh, main chain atoms. In this case, you can see there is these interactions are very specific, right. Now, we need to experimentally verify whether these residues they form typical interactions or not, right, fine. So, in this case, we need to identify uh, the residues which are serving as the hotspot residues, right. So, in this case, you put a cutoff of 2 glycal per mole, right. We mutate any specific residue. So, what is mutation? change of residues, right. For example, if you change any specific residue, right. For example, you change uh, glutamic acid to alanine. If it changes the binding affinity of more than 2 glycal per mole, then you can see these residues as hotspot residues, right. So, then we scan the literature, many data available in the literature and from this data, we can find about 217 types of interactions, right. That means, they can reduce the bending affinity, right, at least uh, 2 glycal per mole. So, there are many mutants are common. So, we take the unique interactions, right, we'll about 68 interactions and we look into the residues, which residues are mutated for this drastic change. Most of them are charged residues, so about 38 residues are charged residues. And if you take the positive charge in aromatic, there are 32 uh, mutations and the hydrophobic is only 7. This will again confirm that what are the interactions we observed from these pairs, right, aspartic acid, arginine, electrostatic, cut and pi and aromatic aromatic interactions, right. These residues are important, right, to form any typical type of interactions, right, right. So, to get more information, regarding this type of interactions, right. Recently, we developed a database, right. This is called the proximate database. This will give you the binding affinity of different mutants. Right? Currently, it has more than 6000 mutants, right. And we will use this information available in the database, right, to understand, right, which type of interactions are important at different locations, right. Here, I gener generalize with the type of interactions and the specific pairs. Right, I will explain a little bit about the database, right, and uh, this contains the binding affinity of protein protein complexes, right, along with other different types of 
structural information as well as the uh, literature information. Right, we have the search option here. So, we use different information you can search based on the proteins if you know the complexes right protein 1 and protein 2 right you can get all the data for this particular complex or if you want to get the hotspot residues right you can see the uh, mutant uh, KD or mutant delta G right we have the uh, delta G right give the range and you can see the value the mutants which are serving as hotspots. So, here you can give the mutation type either you can use from any residue to any residues right you can take the information and you can search with experimental techniques and specific secondary structure right helix or strand and also you can see whether you need only the interface residues right mainly if you see the binding affinity is affected by the interface residues and hence most of the data you can see they replaced only at the interface region right fine. So, you can get the hotspot residues giving the value of 2 kilo kilo per mole right delta g values and you get the hotspot residues and you can also analyze whether this is secondary structure or how it affects in the different functional class or how it affects with the location of residues for example, you can see the accessible surface area and so on right. Now, is the result for example, if I put the data bovine uh, catenic trypsin and this uh, protein 2 right. So, you can uh, this see the inhibitors. So, you can see this is a trypsin this is a trypsin inhibitor we can get all the data. So, okay, this is secondary structure is loop axial surface area is completely buried right and you can see the wild type K d right and the mutant K d and have the delta g values right you can see all the values. Then we give the PubMed uh, reference so that we can uh, link to the PubMed right what is the PubMed literature database right and you can also be given the exactly where you can get the data right table 1 page 177 you will get that exactly the same data from the literature. So, this will help the users to verify the data as well as to get more information regarding any particular complex fine. So, now we give the more details about the interactions right here there are two chains chain E and chain I these two residues are making the complex E is a making the complex this is based on the enzyme inhibitor complex and here this is the data right it is a wild type K D and we have the mutant uh, values right and the delta g is minus 17.95 kilo kilo per mole right. This is the loop region and the relative accessible surface area is 0 0.35 right that is 35 percent the area is 50 angstrom square right that is fine fine. So, when you go to the details you can get the summary and the complex structure and the interactions as well as the reference. The interactions if this is the uh, uh, protein right. So, now you can have what other proteins they are interacting with the particular protein. So, you can have the value from the string database right. So, and have the all the annotations and what are the residues which are interacting with the particular proteins and so on. So, give the references these are the authors and the title as well as the details of the particular particular paper fine. So, now we give the statistics currently we have 176 complexes right and the literature resources about 184 and the, there are more than 5000 single mutation entries. So, these entries are sufficient right to do any analysis. For example, if you want to analyze hotspot residues or you want to analyze the residues which will not make any changes in the binding affinity or you can also relate the binding affinity with other features right to understand the features which affect the binding affinity or you can derive models different methods you can derive to predict the binding affinity upon mutation you have sufficient number of data right in this case it is possible. Then also you can see a double mutation 748 the double mutations you can use and see whether the binding affinity of a double mutation right can be explained with the sum of the single mutations or they are totally different if it is totally different what factors influence this difference and if it is additive and why they are additive. So, you can uh, do the analysis right uh, with the using this data fine. So, with respect to the function class so there is mainly the antigen antibody complexes more than 2000 right the entries and enzyme inhibitor also about 2000 right followed by the other classes uh, GC coupling receptor right receptor complexes other enzymes and so on. 
So, then with respect to the different parameters like delta g, we can have the minimum value of minus 12.2 to the maximum value of plus 12.2 right and also we can have the different data based on the experimental techniques. So, this is a mutation matrix right. So, what can you infer from this mutation matrix like protein stability right. Protein stability mainly we obtain the data for aniline mutations right. Here also you can see the aniline mutation right because aniline scanning mutagenesis. So, you can see the plenty of data whether these residues are mutated to aniline. With why there are many data for aniline? Right, because we can see the difference, right? Because if you take uh, 20 different amino acid residues, right, glycine is the simplest one. But the problem with using glycine is there is no side chain, hydrogen is side chain, so it is completely flexible. In this case, flexibility is also important, right, plays a role, right, for this binding affinity. If we take the alanine, so we write because all the 18 amino acids they contain the CH2, right, and the others their difference. So, alanine contains CH2 like all the other 18 amino acids right. So, if you mutate any residue with alanine you can see the influence or the contribution of different amino acid residues right. That is the reason why they use generally it is alanine right to get the difference in binding affinity right. So, what are the other uh, mutations which are frequently done? So, they use glycine to serine. right ok then asparagine to serine this makes sense right because asparagine is the polar residue right they made asparagine to serine to see the binding affinity and the threonine right. So, here arginine to methionine E 2 ah, E 2 D ok. So, if you do E 2 D what will happen length of the CH 2 group right. So, you can see the how the length around CH2 group uh, reducing uh, 1 uh, from E to D. So, change the binding affinity likewise they did the lysine to arginine not okay, they increase lysine to arginine arginine to lysine not right right which one lysine to lysine to yeah or is in the method right. So, there are many mutations. This will tell you how far the binding affinity right changes with respect to amino acid mutations right fine. So, you can do the average assignment method like here also as in the values and then see whether we can uh, identify the mutants right which increase the binding affinity or less decrease the binding affinity or whether we can able be able to predict the binding affinity and currently there are several methods are available in the literature right. But now, with the available amount of data right we can make a good model for predicting the binding affinity upon mutations right. So, we give the links so we link to the different uh, other databases for example, the protein data bank this is for the protein structures what is uniprot protein sequence, protein sequence database and the PubMed this latest database and the string protein interaction networks you can see if you have any particular protein is linked with or this is interacting with what are the other proteins right in the network. For example, if you construct a human protein body interaction network right there are many proteins that are making as a hubs interact with other proteins that information you can get from the uh, string database. Also you can get the dictionary of protein secondary structures DSSP right from this site and you can uh, get this bind affinity data from different other resources. One is the AACDB right alanine scanning exogenetic database right and the pins the develop, these are developed earlier right and you can see this chemical database is also contains the energetics of the mutation protein interactions. But compared with the other databases our database uh, proximity has several uh, advantages when you have the interface and you can get different types of uh, data with the, with the functional classes and more number of data. So, it currently is including the uh, wild type as well as the mutant data fine. Right. So, from this database you can identify the mutants which are termed as hotspot residues. What are, what are hotspot residues? Yeah, at least the binding affinity change by 2 per mole. So, earlier we discussed and we 
activate some type of interactions right then we will see whether these interactions are important or not right I show few examples. So, this is a complex C 6 A P U B C H 7 complex this will tell you the importance of aromatic interactions right. So, here Elter and uh, Coleman so they experimentally right measured the binding affinity of 49 mutants in this particular protein right and they showed that 15 residues are hotspots. Among the 15 residues if you see 10 residues which are involved in cation B interactions and 5 are involved in electrostatic interactions right and only 3 are heterophobic residues. Then specifically if you tell look at this replaced plane alanine at position number 63 to alanine right they changed it uh, free and the change of 3 color caliber mole. Now, the question is whether this F 63 is important or not right using a structural analysis we also showed the phenyl alanine right is important for the binding affinity. So, if it replaces this one that should reduce the binding free energy. So, take this complex structure is known and get x f 53 and how this f 53 is interacting with other residues right. So, you can see this phenyl alanine 63 right is interacting with tyrosine 694. Now, if we see the, the contributions all the main chain contribution and the side chain contributions and we see most of the contributions are due to the side chains and you can see the interaction energy of minus 1.2 kilo kilo per mole. In this case if you mutate this residue this will change the binding this free energy and this eventually reflected in the case of this solution studies like the free energy change of 3 kilo kilo per mole. That means, if you mutate the phenyl alanine right change the free energy by 3 kilo kilo per mole because this free alanine is very important even the structure they are making good interactions right specifically aromatic aromatic interactions with tyrosine 694. I show another example this was a cut and by interactions right here the Zang et al they analyzed 29 different mutants among 29 mutants 11 mutants are identified as hotspots and 6 are uh, cut and by interaction forming residues 3 are electrostatic interaction forming residues that means charge residues right they mutated y 127a this case here change the free energy of 2.2 kilo kilo per mole that means they are also identified as a hotspot residue. So, if you see whether this tyrosine is really important for the binding affinity then this should make good type of interactions with the binding partner. So, if you see here this is the tyrosine uh, 127 right this is tyrosine 127. If you look into the binding partners right for example, uh, in the interleukin receptor 4 and receptor. So, this origin 85 right. So, they having the uh, energy of 2.4 kilo kilo per mole if you calculate the interaction energy right. So, this is 2.4 kilo kilo per mole this is the van der Waals plus the electrostatic interactions right. So, in this case these two residues they are very important to form the uh, interaction specifically cation pi interaction in this particular protein interleukin 4 receptor this complex right fine. So, and also another example this is the RAS RAP protein. So, here this is the importance of electrostatic interaction. So, here this group they mutated 27 residues among the 27 mutants they added only 6 are hotspots and if you do the analysis on the hotspot residues 5 are involved in cation interactions and 4 are the electrostatic uh, interaction forming residues they are charge residues right. So, so, here they mutated lysine 13 to alanine and they reduced the free energy of 2.5 kilo kilo per mole and D 238A you can see here also they showed the free energy change of 3.9 kilo kilo per mole right. If you look into the structure now this is the ITG studies and they go to the structure. So, lysine uh, 32 right and the aspartic acid 238. So, these two residues so okay, these are the two residues they try to mutate and they are interacting with each other mainly because of this uh, side chain right with the free energy of 2 point minus 2.5 kilo kilo per mole they are making very strong interactions. This shows that these residues K32 and D238 they are important to form the electrostatic interaction this is the reason why they are having the favorable interaction energy of 2.5 kilo kilo per mole and if you mutate either k or d they change the free energy of 
more than 2.5 kilo kilo per mole that means you can see there is a agreement between the computational approaches obtained from the structures as well as the free energy change right they measured from these experimental techniques. So, what are the various aspects we discussed today? What different types of complexes? What are different types of complexes? Protein, protein complexes, protein DNA complexes, protein RNA complexes and protein ligand complexes. What are the specific functions of protein protein complexes? Cell signaling, uh, ubiquitination, molecular switching and in antibody interactions and so on right immunology response and all right. What are the case of the protein uh, nucleic acid interactions? Transcription, right, DNA repair, right, packaging and so on. Protein ligand interactions mainly the acne as an uh, triggering as an inhibitors right for any any activity right and you can also use the protein ligand interactions right to identify the inhibitors right basically in the case of the structure based drug design or ligand based drug design right. So, now if you have the complex it is very essential to identify the binding sites right. So, how to define the binding sites? So, the two uh, res, uh, proteins right are the two binding partners whether they share a common interface right that region you can see the binding sites because uh, they are close to each other they share the common interface uh, inter interface area. How to identify the binding sites? Distance based criteria, acceptable surface based criteria, energy based criteria. How to identify the binding sites using distance based criteria? Okay, we need the atom coordinates right we need exercise coordinates see the protein 1 and the partner protein 2 and get the distance right of any atoms in protein 1 and protein 2 that is very important right. If we set up any uh, distance say 5 angstrom between heavy atoms right if they are within the distance you can identify this as the binding site residues right. So, how to identify the binding sites using accessible surface area based criteria? Reduction accessibility right either they have the complex and if you take out the protein and see whether any change in acceptable surface area right upon complex formation. If there is a change then you can say that these residues are involved in binding right. Then what is say how to identify the binding site using energy based criteria? Calculate the energy like distance you can calculate the energy for each atom and sum up the atoms for each residue and see right which residues they have the free energy of minus 2 kilo kilo per mole then you identify as the binding site residues. Right. So, when you identify the binding site residues either use the distance based criteria or accept surface area based criteria or the energy based criteria you can find the binding propensity right. So, if you do the binding propensity which residues are preferred at the to be at the interface arginine and you can see the tyrosine tryptophan and so on right. So, then we see whether these residues making any specific partners right we identify some partners right. So, these partners they tend to form some specific types of interactions. For example, aromatic aromatic interactions right, cut and by interactions, electrostatic interactions. So, we discussed uh, with the examples right. Experimentally they proved that this binding affinity right drastically changes if the residues are involved in any specific types of interactions and if we mutate right this will cha change the binding affinity right. So, then we discussed about database which contains the binding affinity of complexes and the mutants right which database we discuss proximate right proximate contains which type of data mainly the binding affinity. So, you will get you will get the binding affinity of any uh, mutation right you can try to use this values right for any understanding the binding affinity of any complexes or the affinity upon mutations right. So, in the following classes ok we will then move on to the protein ligand interactions and how to use our computing techniques for designing the inhibitors right using structure based drug design or using the QSIR techniques and so on right and, and the after that we will discuss about some of the common problems right and how to approach the, the, uh, the problems using bioinformatics approaches. Thanks for your kind attention.